welcome to another episode of Herbal History. In this episode, we will talk about the species Oncinium teneflorum, also known as holy basil or tulsi. In this episode, we'll cover the botany of this plant and some modern uses, what it was used for in ancient times, and its potential use in the future. Let's get started. The genus that holy basil belongs to is the same genus that contains regular basil. This species is a short-lived perennial shrub that is 30 to 60 centimeters in height, with hairy stems and leaves with sparse amounts of hairs. It is found in the Himalayas up to an altitude of 6,000 feet. It has been used historically for its medical, perfume, and religious purposes. Toxicity studies done in 2010 by Dr. Sadachiv and 2014 by Dr. Gautam showed that this herb is generally non-toxic. The most important feature of this plant is the essential oil it produces, which is a good natural source of eugenol, a chemical commonly used in pharmaceuticals and cosmetic products. The paper I'm referencing by Dr. Deepika Singh and Dr. Pabir Chad Huri seeks to create a review of its potential medical property, which we will discuss in this video. Holy basil has been used in India since at least 3500 BC in Ayurvedic medicine to treat coughs, respiratory disorders, poisoning, impotence, and arthritis. It has also been mentioned in Greek, Roman, and other systems of medication in ancient times as well. Mostly as a means to treat the common cold, headaches, coughs, fevers of the malarial sort, diarrhea, constipation, and an antidote for a snake bite. How well worked on snake bite treatment or malaria is anybody's guess. I'll be going over some of the treatments used in the ancient past, made using holy basil, and in which areas that they were used. In ancient times, it was used in India when they combined a fresh leaf of water to increase their mental capacity. In an island in India called Nicobar Island, the leaves of holy basil are combined with plant material from a mangrove tree called Tongo and mashed together with coconut oil to be spread on your body. This is done to relieve tiredness. It was also used as a treatment for headaches and colds in Tamil Nadu, India. The preparation in that area was done by combining the leaves with onion bulbs by pounding them together, with the extract be consumed orally. In Bangladesh, the leaves or leaf juice is often used to treat colds, as is the whole plant, also in Bangladesh. In India, it is combined with other plants as a treatment for typhoid fever. The recipe differs from location to location in India, however. Other fevers are treated in much the same way, in both India and Nepal. The leaves have also been used in India as a treatment for diarrhea and dysentery. It was also combined with ghee, which is a type of butter, to treat colic and piles. It has also been historically used to treat diabetes when combined with honey. And this is just a small list of the long litany of recipes involving holy basil in the treatment of diseases and disorders. How well it worked is anybody's guess. But on a personal note, I wouldn't use this for anything more than colds and coughs. Now onto the potential uses for the future. Let's discuss this antioxidant and possible anti-cancer activity. The chemical you see on the screen that I cannot pronounce has been isolated from the holy basil species and been tested on a cell line known as MCF7, a group of cells from a cancer obtained from the breast tissue of a 69-year-old woman who had her cancer-infected breast removed. This cancer cell line was then frequently cloned for use in testing out different cancer drugs before moving on to animal and then eventually human studies. This initial study on the MCF7 line found that this chemical reduced the speed of the vision of that cell line. Other chemicals found in holy baits have also been tested 
and have found similar results. Other compounds like rosemaric acid, apigenin, lutolin, orientalin, venicillin-2, ursulic acid, and oleanic acid are currently being studied for their anti-cancer for their potential use in cancer treatments. Although a great deal of these chemicals listed above have also been found alongside many other chemicals including eugenol to have good antioxidant activity. So the list of antioxidant rich plants is now growing. Huzzah! Now onto its anti-inflammatory action. The most common chemical found in this plant, called eugenol, has been found to inhibit the COX-1 chemical pathway, which causes the uh, inflammatory reaction. The test by Dr. Kelm in the year 2000 seems to suggest that it inhibits this chemical pathway even better than aspirin and ibuprofen. Various eugenol chemical derivatives derived from holy basil have been tested on rat breeds that have been bred to have high cholesterol, and they have found to have reduced that level of cholesterol in this preliminary rat study. The mechanism seems to be a suppression of liver lipid synthesis. Now onto the anti-stress activity studies. Using petri dish cells, a paper by Dr. Richard et al. in 2016 found a reduction in cortisol when a commercial product called OCBEST, an extract of holy basil, was added to the petri dish. The active ingredient blocking the CRHR1 receptor, inhibiting cortisol production. A rat study found similar results as well. The candidate chemicals for its process seem to be oxyglycoid 1 and osmocyte B. Now on to the potential antimicrobial activity. In a in vitro study by Dr. Ali and Dr. Dixit in 2012, the chemical orientin was applied 400 mg per milliliter on different petri dishes of Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus coli, E. coli, Proteus species, and bacterial pneumonia bacteria. This seemed to inhibit the growth of three of these species, the two Staphylococcus species and the bacterial pneumonia species. It did not kill the bacteria, but it did slow down the growth rate. Now onto the final topic, the anti-mosquito activity that seems to possess. A study by Dr. Kelm and Dr. Nair in 1998 seems to suggest that eugenol and another chemical I can't pronounce seem to kill larvae of the mosquito species Aedes aegypti at 200 micrograms per milliliter and 6.25 micrograms per milliliter respectively. Well that about covers everything. Stay lit fam.